There's this story of a woman a long, long time ago who got to meet Vincent Van Gogh. And she asked this great artist to paint her something. She says, sure, not a problem. And he goes, shh. And about a minute, has this masterpiece. And he goes, man, that would be $10,000. And she, $10,000? But she turns into a Karen. What are you talking about, $10,000? Listen, you only spent a minute on this. He goes, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You don't understand. It took me 10 years of devoted sacrifice and practice to get this good where I can paint you this masterpiece in one minute time. You're not just paying me for the minute. You're paying me for the 10 years, the decade of discovery and development to be able to paint you this masterpiece this quickly. And we have to remember as we're growing older that it takes time. As John Wooden said, great things take time, and they should. We have to be patient. we got to put the time in to invest the time to see what we want. What do you want to be 10 years from now? And what are you doing now? Putting in that decade of development and discovery and difficulty and setbacks and heartaches and trials and tribulations and triumphs. So you can get to a point in your life and become the Van Gogh you are. And it might not be painting for you, but you all are an artist, you're a language artist. And to be able to say, shh, Here's my masterpiece. And not just be paid for your time and creating it, but be paid for the time it took you to create the artist and genius and masterpiece that I know all of you are. But you got to put the work in. Life is this wonderful journey. And make sure you're enjoying the journey, the development, as you're on your way to being a genius. Life doesn't begin when you get this or when you become that. Life is right now, and now is the only reality. So enjoy it. This is our last lecture, our final class together. And I wish we could be together and, and hug and high five and say goodbye and take pictures and put you on the wall. We've done for the past 10 years I've been teaching in this class from 129 or led by 143. I wish we didn't end on March 13th because of a global pandemic, COVID-19. But this is it. It's time to say goodbye. This is my final words to you. Life is this wonderful journey. We've been on a wonderful journey together. It's like, growing up is like being like a rushing nesting doll. You start off in this tiny little baby, this child, and you grow, and you become elementary school, and your body starts getting a little bit bigger. And then you grow, and you go through middle school and high school, and our bodies grow even more. And we leave high school and become these adults. And for most of us, our bodies keep getting wider and bigger. But the secret you can hear that. That's the secret. Is remember that every adult you meet, there's still a little child inside. A scared child that wants to be reminded that they're okay, that they're loved, that I see you and you belong. But also, a genius artist that knows how to paint and sing and create and knows that a stick is never just a stick. So to, the secret to life is not growing up and getting these bodies, but growing back and returning to the body Returning to the mindset, that small child that loved your largest, that knew it could create anything and become anything in all things. That's what it means to be a teeter-totter leader. To slow down and play and be childlike again and remove the mindset that most people have that says, what's in it for me? And transform the mindset of what is in me that I can bring out and give in service to you. That's what it means to be a teeter-totter leader. To lower your ego to the very bottom, to elevate love to the very top, and realize that every person I meet is this big, bald, everlasting love in this ever-changing, temporary body. And so no matter how mean or nasty they are, it's my job to be kind to them. The best kind of person you can be is a kind person to every person. Because you never know what kind of day they're having. So I'm going to treat them better than they treat me. I'm going to love them. Because I don't love you because of who you are. I love you because of who I am. That's the secret. It all comes from us. It all comes from inside of us. This genius every day. We need to look in and bring it all out. And at times you might feel like your life's so chaotic. Remember the Rubik's Cube pad in class? And no matter how many times I change this cube, no matter how many colors it is, we still call it a Rubik's Cube. We don't call it 
uh, a part blue, part yellow, part red Rubik's Cube. No. Still Rubik's Cube. Still a Rubik's Cube. No matter how many times we change, no matter how different it looks on the outside, it's still a human. It's still a person. It's still a Rubik's Cube. And we're all going to change and look different and want different things. What makes it all the same is we're, same, we're still humans. We're still Rubik's Cubes. And you might be like me when I was a kid, and even now as an adult sometimes. It's like this, this childhood toy. The shape shift to cubes. Now, for some reason, my shape, <coughs> excuse me, never found a spot to fit into. I never feel like I belong. You know, being a semi-autistic kid, it's, just, it's lonely. It's hard to make friends. You're, you're by yourself a lot. You just don't feel like there's anywhere that ever really accepts you. But I want you to know you're going to find your own thing. Realize your job is not to fit into someone else's mold. Your job is to create your own mold, your own shape. And let that light shine from you and use it to help others see their own beauty, their own worth. And say, hey, I see you. You matter to me. You're important. You belong. And I love you. That's what teeter-totter leaders do. We, we shine our light every day. We're the highlighters in a world full of pins saying, saying, you already as you are, are loved. No matter what you do, what you become. And we all can do that right now. Do something every day on purpose to make someone else feel for certain that they're loved. What are you doing daily that's deliberate to elevate other people to feel more love and to love other people more? And I want to share a few stories of some students who have really done just a fantastic job of making me feel more loved and helping me love other people more. You know, we were going to watch the movie uh, Big as our final week in class and have our final on this and analyze and how it talks about all the things we've been talking about all year long. And Big is a, is a movie starring Tom Hanks where he, and, you know, he's playing on the piano and he meets the Zoltar guy. And, and what it really is, it's this Russian nesting doll come to life. It's this, it's this small 12-year-old kid meets this really hot girl he's trying to impress and they're going on this roller coaster ride and the sign says, you must be this tall to enter. And he's not tall enough. So he goes to this the famous Zoltar machine, and he, and he goes into it, and it's unplugged, and he makes a wish, I want to be big. I want to be older. And Zoltar. Welcome to the land of possibilities. Please spin the wheel while you ask the question, and I will look deep into your future. Zoltar, make me big! And, sh and, and your wish has been granted. And the next day, Tom Hanks wakes up in this much bigger body, but still in a childlike mind. And that childlike mind allows him to just excel and rock at the top of this toy company because he knows what children want. He's still playful himself. He makes time for make-believe and time to play, and he becomes the top of the company. And other people resent him, make fun of him, and jealous of him, but he still loves them all and smiling. He has that childlike sense of humor. He doesn't retaliate. He just forgives and moves on and says, bless you, those says, F you. And he just keeps going and going and going. But pretty soon he forgets the magic that got him there. He forgets what it means to be a little child, and he starts growing up and becoming like those people around him. Where our job is to become the love we come from, by only allowing love to come from us, no matter how unloving people come at us or for us, to only give away love. That's when you become a genius. That's when you become a Van Gogh. You only have love to give away. No one has to earn it. You give it because love is who you are. And so when you know who you are, you know what to do. Love is who you are. Love is what you do. And so he decides, I want to go home. I want to become a little kid again. And he goes back to the Zoltar. He finds him. He asks, makes the wish, I want to be a, a kid again. And you'll find as you get older, you know, there's an old saying that, uh, uh, I think it was Mark Twain that said, the youth is wasted on the young. You know, everyone wants to be old. Everyone wants to be young except young people. We all want to grow up and become bigger and bigger and bigger. We realize when we become older, all we want to do is grow back and be young again. To have that youthfulness, those younger bodies, that mind, the playfulness. But you still have it right now, so don't waste it. Don't give up your youthful vigor and wonder in a rush to be old. Enjoy these wonder years. And never forget the magic that got you here. You know, there's a scene, one of my favorite scenes in the movie Big, where he's hanging out with this, with this woman. And again, she thinks he's some 30-year-old man. And she says, hey, you, you want to you wanna spend the night? He's like, oh, like a sleepover. Because he has the young, innocent mind. And they, and they go in, and he has his bunk bed. And she's on the bottom bunk, and he comes out, and she's kind of like thinking he's going to come over and kiss her. And he runs over, and she's like, 
And then he hops on top of the bunk bed and he's like, oh, I can't wait. We have good dreams because he still has that young mindset. And she's a little disappointed at first. And then Tom Hanks' his character, he leans down the bottom of the bunk, the top of the bunk to the bottom and says, here you go. Here is a glow-in-the-dark compass ring so you never get lost and always find your way home. And I love that scene. And I put that little scene on, uh, I think, my Instagram or Snapchat story uh, like two months ago. Didn't think anything of it. I just mentioned it. And then uh, a few weeks ago, it was my birthday. And, you know, we're in quarantine. But my sister-in-law, Jennifer, and, and my brother, Stuart, my two nieces, Lily and Avery, they surprised me and knocked on my door. And they had this little cake and all these candles and a little, little presents and gift. I know they're coming. It was really nice. And Jennifer's always very thoughtful. And, you know, I always say our, our best kind of thoughts when we're thinking kindly of other people. And she's always thinking kindly of other people. And a couple days go by, and I get this package of mail from Amazon. Like, I didn't order anything from Amazon. And, and I look into it, and it's just this little bronze compass. And I open it up, and I'm thinking, it's from Jennifer Schultz. I'm like, why did she give me this compass? And it's the exact compass. I used to give it for, you know, 15 plus years, I used to give these exact compasses away to all my captains on my basketball teams. As a reminder them what this is the symbol of leadership. It's your job to bring all of us home. It's your job to steer us in the right direction. And I'm trying to figure out, what, why did Jennifer give me this? And then there's a little note inside. And it just says, here's a glow-in-the-dark compass so you never get lost and find your way home. Happy New Day, love you, from Jennifer. And it just warmed my heart so much. It's like one of those, those boomerang moments we talked about. Something I had given out for years. I got the exact lower one given back to me for the first time. And I think that's so important that we, we find a little, it doesn't take small acts to make big impacts. Here she was just thinking of me when she saw my post and went out on Amazon and sent me a little gift. But it's the note that really made it special. Sentimental value. And that's what I want to encourage you all to do. Find little ways to do great things. And I was going to give, I, I, and for you guys, I bought all of you guys as your farewell present, these glow-in-the-dark compasses too, as a reminder for you to find your way home. But again, I guess I'll give them out to my kids next year. But um, I want to challenge you all. When you're in a moment of darkness, whether it's that mirror compass I gave you, or the bucket fillers, or the bracelets, or the teeter-totter, keychains, whatever it might be, is find your way home. And home not meaning just the way back to the neighborhood you grew up in, but home to your childlike spirit that says you belong, that you're okay, that you matter, that you're important, and most of all, that you're loved. Help yourself find your way home so then you can go and turn Shine that love like those and help them find their way home to you. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and leave you on this, and then we'll say farewell and we'll say goodbye. You know, many, many years ago, I mentioned once, just passing to one of my classes, how, you know, again, growing up, only having one real friend, being an autistic kid by myself a lot, it's lonely. I never really had a birthday party my whole life. This was like in October. My birthday's in April. And then I forgot, I didn't mention it, but they didn't. And they organized this whole thing, all, multiple peers, multiple classes, and I came to school my birthday, April 26th. I see this big commotion outside my door, and there's streamers and strings, and there's blooms everywhere. I'm like, what's going on? I open the door, the whole room, they had gotten a janitor to open the door, and they decorated the whole room, and there's presents, and birthday cake, and streamers, and supplies, and a bunch of peers put together, and they brought pizza on us, and I'm like, what is this? You're having your first birthday party. And all these young kids came together and made such a magical, special moment for me that I've never forgotten. Small acts can make big and lasting impacts. They helped me find my way home that day. There's another time I can remember, and you can read about this in uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, rather than Acts of Kindness story. I had, I had a student ask to meet, uh, he was a senior, one of my aides, to meet and talk about college stuff. And I, and I agreed to meet, meet him for dinner. I think it was just going to be him and one other aide. And I get there, and they're both all dressed up. I like, you know, what, what's going on? Like, you'll see. And I almost canceled that day, and thankfully I didn't. I go back, and they had rented out the whole back area of the restaurant. There were like 40 students there, many of which were never even in my class. Well, these, you know, a lot of kids kind of come to my class and hang out, and they've kind of been influenced by the teachings. They weren't even on my role ever. And they all had a gift for me. They all wrote a hand letter for me. They, they, they paid for, organized this whole place and bought dinner. I kept thinking, what is this for? I mean, this is not my birthday or anything like before. What is this for? I couldn't understand it. But it's for you. I'm like, what do you mean? I was speechless. As an English teacher, it's hard to be as speechless. They said, just, 
You've all made us feel loved, and you've all taught us how to be, you taught us all how to be teeter tot leaders. So we're trying to be a teeter tot leader for you to make you feel loved as well. And never in my life had I ever experienced anything like that. Those are a bunch of teenagers who on their own secretly organized and planned this whole thing and raised the money and, and rented the room and the restaurant and, and planned out this great surprise for me. And I've never forgotten that either. It's another way they helped me find my way home. And then the very next year, I, I had a, a senior class here had asked me, two, two of my aides again asked me to meet them. I'm not thinking it's going to happen twice, right? This is cool. And we go to this restaurant uh, in Seal Beach. And I go there, and there's this huge table, and all these kids are already there. And again, the multiple kids I never had in my class, but kids I had to come close to. And they did a whole other thing for me again. They all pitched in, and they bought me a watch, because I had given away hundreds of watches to people. And just these full circle moments that mean so much to me. And I want to challenge you. What can you do on a daily basis? Whether it be sending someone a little compass and a note, or showing up to the doorstep, or... You know, take them out to a surprise dinner or what have you to make them feel like they're important and they're loved and that they matter. To make them feel loved so they can go make other people feel more loved. You don't have to become big to do great things. You have to return your inner childlikeness and love as large as you did as a kid and then top yourself every single day. How can I top myself? How can I become better at loving tomorrow than I was today? Speaking of big and becoming big leagues, this right here is the, the jersey number 16, autographed by Jake Brooks, who I just found out today became the 2020 Fountain Valley High School Athlete of the Year, my boy Brooks. Jake Brooks is on my basketball team as a freshman starter on the varsity basketball player I was in my class as a sophomore as a sophomore English and I just it's just been a wonderful wonderful person I'm so happy he got to become athlete of the year he's like a 4.0 student could have been a three-sport athlete if he wanted to be going to UCLA John Wooden school as a scholarship but more important than all of that all those things is what a kind loving human being he is you know when we're young we want to we want to wear a jersey we want to become in the big leagues like somebody does I want you to know you don't have to have a jersey. You know, Jake's goal is to become a major league baseball player. You don't have to become in the major leagues to be a major person. You don't have to do anything big to become big time. Just don't big time anyone. Don't ever act like you're too big for someone. No one is greater than you and no one is beneath you. We gotta love people the way they are. And Jake Brooks really helped me feel loved too. Jake Brooks is a terrific teeter totter leader. You know, a few years back, uh the school told me that they wanted to hire a, a basketball coach who was going to recruit people because they didn't think we could win with our local talent. They wanted our, our travel ball coach to go out and recruit better athletes. And I was kind of bummed that summer. And, and Jake Brooks, who was a freshman going into a sophomore season, sophomore year, called me up and said, hey, can, can, take, can I take you out to pizza? And he took me out to Lamp Post Pizza. It was just him and I. And he, he offered to pay, but I wouldn't let him pay. But it was a small little gesture. He just mentioned how, you know, I was thinking I was going to have you know, a coach to give the next four years, next three years, but I got cut short. And he just wanted me to know that I, I still want a relationship with you. And that little 14-year-old kid made that effort. And it stayed with me all these years since. I don't know why I wear his jersey. I don't think about the UCLA star, the potential Major League Baseball star in the future. I'm always going to think of the kid who took me out to pizza, who helped me find my way home in the darkness, because he did an action of love and kindness. I'll never forget that. And I wish for all of you, whatever you're striving for, go for all the things you want, the throne with awards and achievements. But you don't need a jersey to be big time. You don't need awards or medals to be big time. You don't need a high bank account to be big time. You just have to remember what it means to be little and how large you loved then. And I'm grateful not only for... Jake Brooks and all these former students, I am so eternally grateful for each and every one of you. I am my, my tenth year here teaching. I was excited every single day as it was my first year 10 years ago. I'm so sad I got cut short. But no, you gave me the wonderful gift. I've never looked forward to a weekend. I've never dreaded a Monday. I've never known when spring break or summer break. I don't count down the days. 
because I love every day with each and every one of you. And as sad as it is for me to say this, it's time to say goodbye. Before I do, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for the impact you've had on my life every single day. For all the laughs, the jokes, the good times, the great deep conversations, through all the little gifts, the letters you've given me, all the ways you made me feel loved, like all these kids did in the stories I shared today. Keep taking that love out into the world and making the world a more loving place, and you'll find your place in the world. You don't need to fit in anyone else's pieces. We're all just people trying our best to be our best. Remember, you can't become your greatest self until your life is led by something greater than yourself. And there's nothing greater than love. And I wish you lives led by love allow you to elevate the lives of other people like you've done for me. One final time, we'll end class on this note. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. I love you all big, giant, much. I'm going to miss you. I love you.